viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel get started back on the rapid ranger we're going to start with the rear brakes in a previous video we did the front brakes or at least most of them still waiting on some grease caps there and then to bleed the system out because we're doing all four calipers so let's get started i got a bunch of tools and stuff here on my cart so you're going to be wiggly and jiggly a little bit we're going to take the little dampener slash upper caliper bolt out Sometimes these things are real pisser to get out. A lot of times you can't get them loose with just a wrench. You get a little pair of vice grips or something on there and crack them loose. There's a little noise suppressor. It won't clear the spring, so we'll leave it in. We'll unhook the bottom bolt. Using the same wrench. Usually they come right loose, you can just spin them out by hand. Clearly is not the case. I do have ratcheting wrenches before you write that comment. I get that comment a lot. Take that one out. We'll take our bleeder cover off because we're going to need to reuse that. Maybe. A little crusty on there. Oh boy. I believe your cover did not help in this case. Right full of the crust. We'll save that. Usually I douche them down good with fluid film before I stick them back on or a dab of grease or something like that. And then we'll spin our brake hose off. I'm going the right way. Wrong way. Get our bucket lined up there. Let that drizzle. And then we need the pry bar. Typically, you pry these out from the top if things aren't all seized up. You gotta be careful if you're reusing the caliper and the inner pad sticks. These are probably phenolic pistons and they have rose clips on the insides of the pad. And if it comes out, it can you know chip or crack the edge of the piston. So be mindful of that. We really don't care if it breaks up because it's going in to get rebuilt. Yeah, these are plastic. So, and this is what they call a rose clip. I think for obvious reasons, if you look at it. Um, if your wife asks you for roses, don't bring these home. All right, so there's that. Step two. We've got to get the rotor off. Hang on. So this is the OEM rotor. I guess we get that other pad off. Throw that over in the bucket. And score! First try. So we gotta get these clips off. You just use a chisel and just knock on each side of them, crack them. That'll pop right off. Woo! Watch your lookers. And then got to get the rotor off but in order to do that we got to get it loose and she's gonna be crusty on there so hang on big nasty and you get her cracked loose so you can actually wiggle it sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't so now Gotta go down on the old girl. And what we need to do is pop this little rubber out. Save it because you don't get a new one. Come out of there, fella. Take that rubber out, set it down here where we won't lose it. Then we need to have a looky inside. Alright, our star adjuster is towards the bottom. You see the little star wheel in there? Okay. Okay, children. And then, whoa, hang on. I'm trying to do this one handed. Oh, where's she snug? She's seized up. I'm gonna reach in here. Oh, yeah. She thought you. She is seized up like a banshee. Ah, let me set you down. A couple of options at this point. You can A, the little nails that stick through here, the hold downs, you can take and 
grind them off carefully. Don't ruin your back plates. One there, one there up top. Grind them off, try to wiggle the whole drum off, you know, beat it, do whatever you got to do to get it off. It'll destroy your parking brake shoes, which are probably already junk anyways. Or, we can get our old vector here. We'll put a little bit of heat on that. Uh, so that's B, C. You can reach in here with a torch and just go and cut the adjuster. I don't like doing that unless it's absolutely necessary because I don't want to ruin the axle seal. I'm just going to use a very light flame. We're just going to go in there and give her a little tickle. Now the speed sensor is pretty close to that, so be mindful. Don't go in there like an animal. We just want to put a little bit of heat on the adjuster. Try to get her freed up, a little bit of heat towards the bottom of it. All right, she looks a little toasty, and we'll try to spin it. Oh, there she goes. Now nah, she's talking to us, I think. Oh, yeah. She's spinning now. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. A little bit of heat goes a long ways. She's smoking. I want to back it off, get some tension off the parking brake shoes. I think they got some kind of zinc coating or galvanized or something that you're not supposed to breathe. Ta da! A baby is born. So that wasn't too bad. We're going to take a knock our hardware off here. They're usually crusted on there pretty good. You can see why we grease underneath them now. You see all the rust and crap that's accumulated there. And then what we need to do is go eat lunch because it's lunchtime. I'm going to pull that copper washer off that hose so I don't forget. You don't want to double wash them because they'll leak like crazy. So make sure all your copper washers are off both sides. And then we get the daunting task of the parking brake shoes. I'm starting to delaminate just a smidge. Not too bad. These aren't overly awful to do, but if you've never done them, you'll come up with a few new swear words in a food coma. Let's see where we at here. Parking brake shoes, that's where we were. So we're gonna take and yank the spring off here on the end by the adjuster. Get back in there and get a hold of it. Take that off. Now we've got all new hardware and of course heating up, you know, we ruined that spring anyways. And then we can take, we'll leave our adjuster in for right now. We gotta pull the nails out. Now these are a little tricky to stop here. So I usually shove them towards the nail and then push, push in on it a little bit, make sure it's you know freed up. And then I'll take and push in on it with the pliers and then push the nail towards the keyhole, towards the open spot. That's kind of one swift move. I'll pull the nail out from the back side so that's what that looks like when they go in, like I say, that's that's their resting position. When they're locked in, I push it down, back towards that opening in the little, I guess it's a keyhole, whatever you want to call it. So we'll do that there. And then also on the bottom, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but same, same method, we push down here with a little flick back. And out she comes, all right. And then on the front side, forward, a bunch of tricky guys there, they take and put the spring on the inside of the shoes. That is the biggest pisser on these things. Let me show you. So you can see the hook of the spring right there. Well, all you can do is get it off because you gotta get it off. So we'll give her a flick up and in. Usually that'll get it started. So it gets it kind of partially in the hole and you flick it through. Boom, the bottom shoe's off. And then you got your top shoe. And the rest of the stuff we don't need. I'll pick it up off the floor, because there is a cord charge on the shoes. All right, so we'll save them. If you're reusing stuff, you know, save it, because <laughs> you'll need it. We bought all new stuff. So there's that. Once it's off, we want to make sure our parking brake mechanism is free. Just make sure it pivots on that lower pin which this one does. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this one works freely. Now, if you reach back here and pull the cable, 
there's a good chance that you'll unhook it. And these are a real piss pot to hook back up. So try not to unhook it. But also try to make sure that it's, you know, as free as can be, which this one is. It's got real good movement. Okay. So we're happy with that. So we'll leave that alone until we're finished. Let me get a whizzy wheel here. We'll whizzy wheel the mounting pads, which is this surface right here, here, and here. There's six of them total. We'll shine them up a little bit. take and clean the mounting surface up here for our caliper while I'm right here. Get her off of the widget wheel. And then I'd like to get the inside portion of it just with a stiff wire brush. You can get in here with a little square file too if you want to hit the back side real good. Uh, we can probably clean up the face of the rotor. I guess we got our tools out in hand. Or the face of the axle, rather. I don't even know what part I'm looking at. using caliper grease you can use never seize if you want whatever your poison is this stuff's pretty gummy sticks around for a while so it's just like doing rear brake shoes just on a set of drum brakes same process minus the wheel cylinder get us some brake shoes right yeah Figure out how to get into them. Looks like you can get off the knife. But. All right, there's those little guys. Now, if you want to keep them clean, you can take a, some masking tape and over the ends of each one if you want to do that. Or just don't get them real dirty. Or if you do, use some brake clean. But don't, not so much that you get rid of all your mounting lube. There's a balance there that you have to do. We'll get out our new bag of hardware here. We'll open her up. First thing first, we want to get out our two nails and our two retainers. Now these retainers are different than the ones we took out. Now I have a special tool for putting these ones on that. Because these ones, they come in and they're a quarter turn, I guess it would be. So when we stick it on, nail's going to go through, quarter turn, and lock. Now there's a tool for these. With the axle in the way, it's a whole, uh, little bit of a pain to use. So we're going to stick our nail in. Let me move you. Hang on. Everybody hang on. Whee! There we go. I think you can see there. Let's hope you can. That's going to go in the elongated slot. So we'll stick that up in there. Now I like to have the shoe kind of up here in the open. Now doing it like this, I could use my tool. Or we can just go old school. Players. Now, party is going to want to push that in, grab the head of that nail, and twist it. You can twist the head right off the nail. So I like to just give her a little push. Get her through. Wiggle that 
clip and turn the nail from the back side. Get her, get her most of the way. Once you get her most of the way, then you can just very gingerly just turn it the rest of the way. All right, and then just leave it. I'll pull her out, get her up on her pads where she needs to be. Okay, and then we gotta do the same thing on the bottom. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. I got you up too high, but you're gonna take my word for it. Need rocket surgery. Nails through. And then before we do that, now here's a free tip Friday for you. This is from Mima. If you want to put this spring on the back side, you are gonna lose your mind trying to get it on there because of the parker brake mechanism, the actuator on the other side is in the way. A couple things you have to be mindful of, and that is the direction. You see how this spring, like if we put it on this way, the straight portion favors that side. If we put it on this, uh, let's see. What am I talking about here, fella? <laughs> yes, so I guess it's like this. So that way, it favors that side. If we put it in this way, it favors this side. This is offset to miss the tone ring on the axle. Now, it doesn't matter if you put it on the outside of this spring or if you take and mount it on the inside. The, the thing that matters the most is that this is offset to miss the tone ring. So if you want to take and do it OEM style and have it on the inside of the shoes, go for it. Me, I like to just kind of fish her up through, up past the tone ring in front of, or behind rather, of the actuator and we'll bring her up. I'm just going to reach up in here, just very gingerly hook it into the top where it belongs. Then we just leave her hanging, okay? Here comes a choo-choo train. We'll just leave that spring in there. We'll get back to that in a bit. That's that's free tip me Ma taught me. You'll, you'll go nuts trying to get that thing behind there. When the axle's out, different story. Axle in, forget about it. You'll, you'll just destroy the spring. Maybe you won't, should be lots of comments saying I'll do it, but if you don't wanna go crazy, just listen. Come on, fella. Whoa, man, almost lost a finger. Come on, you piss pile, there we go. Rotate, baby, there she is. All right, let's go to the other side. Okay. Now my little, my little spring popped out a little bit. So we're going to take her and get that back up and up in that joint. Spring's up in the top. Now, what you have to do, it wants to, where's my little pad? What it wants to do, is it wants to go behind this shoe, but you don't want it to. So you got to kind of pull this shoe down. Coax this spring out around the shoe. Where are you? There she is. Now you got it on the right side of the shoe. We'll take and pick our sh bottom shoe up into the bracket where it belongs. Come on, fella. There she goes. Okay, so now we're on the actuator. And then what we gotta do is reach up in here. You're gonna grab the spring. And you're gonna pull it down and hook it in the bottom hole. It's a tip bit or a little bit tricky. Get her in, give her a push. Make sure it does not contact the tone ring. That is the number one rule, if there was a rule to this. So once your spring's hooked up, let me pick up a pad. We're gonna whizzy wheel back over here to the other side. Wee, wee. What's up, Mrs. O? Um, For me? Mm -hmm. Is it the president again? Demand. Ah, I got it. Okie dokie. All right, thanks. Hey, bud. Freaking napper. They just called to let me know the midday order did not show up, so we're not getting a grease cap. They had one in stock, which they've already sent me. Oh, suckers. What are you going to do? Freak out on the guy on the phone? What's that gonna solve? Mrs. O tells me nothing. So now, we're gonna take the bottom half of our adjuster. It comes with some white lithium grease. We're gonna give her a little squirt in there. 
All right, put it right in there. Then this piece I've already threaded together. You stick her in there and just kind of tore around so it gets in the threads. Whoa, whoa, she got excited. <laughs> got a little on my finger. All right, so there's that. Which direction did this face? It was facing down. Remember, the screw portion was at the bottom. So we're gonna stick that on there. Get her lined up. Spread apart the shoes just enough to get her in. Come on, baby. There she is, there's that. And then, last but not least, the white spring. Hook it on the bottom first, hook it on the top, it really doesn't matter. As long as it's hooked together when you're done. So there's that, and then we'll take, make sure our shoes are sitting about equal on the pads. What I like to do, a little bit of fluid film in the actuator just to keep it from, you know, seizing up. Hold on. Wrong can. So we'll give her a little toot right down inside of it. All right, a little bit up there. Make sure it gets on the pivot. Don't go wild with this now. All right, so we got a little bit in there. Then we can give her the classic reach around here. Pull the cable. clearly works. Why is only one shoe going up and down, you ask? Well, envision the drum around this. The one shoe is going to come up and hit, and as soon as that hits, it's going to put pressure on the other shoe. See what I'm saying? No main burn. And I think that's it, folks. We didn't get much schmutz on them, so we don't have to get too excited about getting them cleaned off. So what we'll do, and uh, like I say, the one spring is the most important thing. Do not let it hit the tone ring. If it does, when you spin it, it'll go tick, 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 and you'll be like, what in the thunder? Or something like that. But like I say, if you want to put the spring on the backside, go for it. We'll take, before you put your rotor on, slather these babies up, otherwise you'll get it all over the rotor. So we're gonna get these greased up. All right, all right. I think I say all right a lot. All right, right. I'm like a lunatic out here talking to myself all the time. And I do that whether or not the camera's on or not. You wanna know who's worse at that? Josh, that kid, he has full on conversations with himself over there. Seriously, he does. Oops, come this way a little bit. See, I did their double installation. So once those babies are on, and they're quite a bit longer than they need to be, but they have little cutouts in them that go right to the edges. So don't, you know, smash them down and smash in that little notch. Now we'll get our new poly coated rotor. Slip that baby on. Find us an axle nut. Come here, old axle nut. There we go. Oh, you keep some around on the old lift. Stick that up there. I'm just using the take up space. Make sure she's on. All right, let's get our caliper. Make sure our slider pins are good. Maybe it's all covered up with this slop. And we're gonna take and grease it up. Make sure you get some grease in them holes there to keep her from getting all crusty. Unless you live where the crust isn't, then don't worry about it. So that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna slip on the outer one. Make sure you've got the right pad with the little spring on it. That's gonna go towards the top. This one actually is labeled with an L on it for left, I assume. Or lucky. And we're gonna slip it on. way a little bit and down there's ears that'll line right up in them holes when it's on it'll be sitting flush against the outside portion of the caliper then we're gonna grease the piston face get a little bit inside there where the rose clips go now some calipers you got to put this baby on first because the rose clips are like really long so 
this one it just clears. I'll stick that on. Give her a click. And we're ready. Make sure your pins are pushed in because these will snag you up. So when you go to put this baby on, you flick it on. If that boot is sticking out, it's going to hit the edge on the inside here where the bolt goes and it could tear your rubber. And tearing your rubber is bad. Then you got to get a new one. So we're going to line her up. Whoop. Get her up on the notch there. Give her a flick like a moron. I forgot to put this in first. So we're going to give her a flick back out. Get that started. Oops. Oh, ho, 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 almost cost me a rubber. There we go. And then get her lined up here and we'll get the bolts back in it. Snug them up. Mm -hmm. where, oh, where is my bolt gone? There it is. Get that baby lined up. Man, I keep smelling battery. You know when a battery starts to sulfate and it stinks? That's all I can smell in the shop today for some reason. I only got two cars in here. I got the Mustang over in the other bay and I got this one in. So we're going to snug that up. Old fashioned style here. that one off and double check this one you can never be too sure there's that there she's good and snug and then that one looks pretty clean we'll give her a little shot of the good stuff it's got some dirt and crusties on it oh where's my bone oh there she is did some yoga move right there All right, and the old banjo back here. Unthread that little guy. New copper washers, one in, one out. One top, one bottom, however you want to look at it. Brake fluid makes the gloves slip. And we'll get a little wrench. Bring the viewing audience pleasure. I got a ratchet wrench. Just so you start to believe me. Ah! That's good. But wait, there's more. We want to make sure that our parking brake is going to work. It's going to work. So I'm going to reach down in here. And we're going to spread her out until she's tight. We can't move that wheel anymore, then we're going to back her off a few clicks. Just this way here, we equalize the shoes, you know, we push them out all the way. All right. Sometimes it's hard to tell if you're coming up against spring tension or the shoe's actually hitting. Sometimes you'll notice when you're looking through there, you're like, well, what's the difference between a little bit of drag and a little too much drag? Uh, when you look through there, you know, because you're hearing it drag, which we're going to go around and seat the parking brake shoes when we drive it, but you'll see if there's too much, usually your star adjuster will flick up and down there, like if there's just too much friction. So that's a free tip for you. We'll stick our rubber back in there. Frankly, the parking brakes only get used once a year. And that's for inspection. Reach back here and grab the cable. Just pull the parking brake cable a couple times. Ooh, she's free. I guess that's it, folks. We're going to be waiting until tomorrow for a stinking grease cap so we can take her for a shimmy. Which I guess we could pop the old one back on and take her for a shake. 
and then just pull the hubcap if we have to. I say we get bleeding. This battery definitely stank. She got some stank. She did the stanky leg. You know that dance? I don't either. It stinks. It's this battery that stinks. Hopefully the camera still works. It just hit the floor. Broke the tripod. Let's try pod number six since I've started the YouTube. So we're going to use our power bleeder. And we're going to flush her out with some DOT4. We're giving her the big upgrade. Probably only calls for dot three. Uh, dot three, yes, way at the bottom there it says it. Dot four is compatible with dot three in the sense that they'll mix. But you can always upgrade to four. You can't go from four to three, but you can go from three to four. If that makes sense to you. You can give it a slightly higher boil point. In case he takes your ranger to track day, you never know. So we're gonna hook this little guy on there, okay? We'll get the hose off the old brant. There she comes. Twist it in and out every single time. We'll run it up over the front of the vehicle. We'll hook her up. We'll turn on the pressure pot. You got about 10 pounds in her right now. It should be enough to do what we need to do. But we'll sit here for a minute and make sure it's not going to all over the place. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just starting to fill the reservoir. If you have an air leak, it'll fill it all the way up and then it'll squirt all over the place. And uh, what size are you going to be today? We'll go 10. Starting back here on the right rear. We'll leave that open. I'm going to go put a little bit more air pressure in the pressure pot. And we're going to let her pee until she comes out clean. So I got both the rears dribbling right now. About 18 pounds in the pressure can. It's still coming out pretty yellow. It's pretty nice. Of course, a lot of crap in the lines and stuff like that. Then what I'm going to do, once I have fluid out of all four wheels, I'll go up there, I'll pump the brakes, uh, bring the pistons out on the calipers all the way around. Sometimes if there's still air trapped, you know, in here behind the piston, that'll kind of loosen it up. So what I'll do is with the pressure pot still on, I'll crack them all loose again, make sure there's no air, and we'll call it good. Now that is finished. I've started it, I've pumped up the brakes, I've turned off the bleeder. The reservoir is only half full or half empty, I guess. Depends on if you how you look at it, you know, if you're a glass half full kind of guy or gal. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick the bleeder back on, fill it up the rest of the way. Max mark. Because all the pads are new, so we don't have to worry about overfilling it. We'll shut her off. Cover that up. Close that up. Well, now sometimes in these plastic reservoirs will be, you know, black schmutz that can make your new brake fluid look a little cruddy. Short of replacing a reservoir, I don't really know an effective way to clean them. You can take the reservoir off. You always chance breaking the plastic hold downs when you do that. Or in some cases they're held on with a, you know, a bolt or a roll pin and it's really difficult to get off without pulling the master cylinder. I just leave it. Um, I don't really know what to do. If you get the reservoir off, I've tried like soapy water, you know, just put it in there and there's baffles in there. So I, you know, you just try to shake it aggressively and I've never had great success getting it all out. So I just flush it. I know the ABS, you know, has all been flushed. You know, all the lines are, you know, blown out clean. So it's the best you can do. I guess short of, you know, replacing the reservoir. The last thing we need to do Let's wipe up any brake fluid that we spilt or that drizzled out of the bleeder, got on anything. 
And then we've got to reinstall all of the bleeder covers which this vehicle had, which is great, which is this style here, which are really great. And then what I do, you can either pack these with grease or fluid film. Kind of looks like schnot. Poor little sheep. And we'll stick that on there. And I'll do it on all four. So that's going to be it for now, folks. Got to wait till tomorrow. So it looks like there's going to be a part three. And that's going to involve the grease cap and a test drive. Uh, if you want it. I suppose you probably do. And I won't hear from you before I have the car done anyway. So that's what we'll do. Uh, I don't really want to clean up the old grease cap and put an old one on just to drive it. I don't need this lift for the rest of the day. We'll have it first thing in the morning. It's already like almost 2 o'clock. So then we'll handle it then. There are some other things he wanted done on this truck, but I'm going to do some of my other appointments that I have for the day. Get them taken care of. No customer left behind. That's our motto. Not really. I can throw the back tires on it. We're done back here. We can throw the other front tire on it. We're done up there. Put them on, torque them, all that stuff. You guys know the routine. Stick around for part three. The grease cap, the test drive, the parking brake, pad, shoe, burnishing. I'll show you my process which I used to do that to seat in your new parking brake shoes and then see if we need to make any other parking brake cable adjustments, brake shoe adjustments afterwards. You know, once we burn those shoes in, we know they're good. We give it back to the customer and we know it's all going to work, particularly when it goes to get it inspected because these guys don't live around here and I don't want to get the phone call saying, eh, you know, the new stuff you put on doesn't work, that type of thing. Got to finish your job, I guess is what I'm getting at. Why don't you guys finish your job by going down there and leaving a comment in the comment box or criticism if you have one of those. While you're down there, click subscribe, ring the bell in that order. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.